What would you do tomorrow if eggs went to suddenly went to ten dollars a carton, or uh, um, bread going for five or ten dollars a loaf, milk going for fifteen dollars a gallon? I mean, what are you gonna do? Our property is constantly changing. We're trying new things that we've never done before. We're trying to grow things that we've never grown. I think uh, the garden this year, it didn't do as well as last year. Um, some of it was weather related. Some of it was soil related. Some of it was compost related. Um, you know, a lot of people think, hey, you know, just drop a seed in the ground and it's going to grow, and that's not how it works. You have to have good irrigation, good drainage, good soil. Yep. And somewhere we missed the boat on that. But we did have a garden. It did produce, don't get me wrong, it, it, uh, it produced just not as well as it did last year. Um, we're going to change that next year. Uh, we're going to be, we're going to reduce the size of our garden uh, probably by half. Uh, so it'll be a more focused garden, you know, that way we're um, not trying to focus on an acre and a half of garden space, you know, well, um, I mean, we're still going to grow a lot, don't get me wrong. It's just we're going to be a little more focused with it. Um, we can give the plants more attention, uh, not just from the irrigation standpoint or the weeding or whatever else that needs to be done pruning, but they'll get, they'll get the attention, that, uh, the plants will get the attention that they need. We're going to take half of that garden um, next year. And we're going to uh, um, put some animals in there. I think we're going to get two goats to put in that area. Behind me here, we had set this area up for pigs. Uh, it's not even finished yet. I still got to put a gate in there. I still got to put the electric fencing in. I got to finish the back on the shelter and build the feed station. Things that I hadn't got done in time um, to get pigs. So we uh, decided to hold off on the pigs uh, till next spring. That'll give me, you know, the, the summer and this fall to finish the infrastructure for those. So that when we bring the pigs on the property, I'm not scrambling. We're not scrambling around trying to build stuff, get this, that. We already have everything here. We have everything that we need to be successful with them. Now the garden here, you know, like I said, it was. I think it's just too much for Rebecca. Um, you know, even with the little bit of help that I'm able to give her. It's really too much for one person. So we're gonna reduce this down so she can focus on giving the plants um, the care that they need. You know, it's just, it's, it's a lot. I mean, we have, our garden was an acre and a half and uh, no matter who you are, it's a lot to take care of for one person. So uh, moving forward, we're gonna cut this down by half This area, which doesn't do as well uh, for plants. Obviously, we got a lot of weeds growing up there now. We got a little bit of corn in. That corn didn't do very well. Uh, but those areas, we're going to use that area for the goats. Obviously, we're gonna have to do some, uh, we're gonna have to take care of some more fencing. 
Yep. <laughs> more work. Yep, more projects. A lot more fence posts to drive in. Uh, I'm kind of getting used to doing that every year. I don't know if you can see, it's still a little dark this morning, but uh, you can see where the rows of potatoes that we dug up. Like I said, we still got uh, a row and a half of sweet potatoes yet um, to be dug. We're waiting till the first frost to do that. This year we had a lot of success with our uh, meat chickens and that went unbelievably well. And in fact, uh, next year we're going to do four times the amount of chickens that we did this year as far as meat birds go. Yeah. It was, uh, it was really successful and uh, and we enjoyed doing those. Uh, the fact that the freezers are full uh, of uh, uh, chicken now. Um, I don't know, we harvested between all the chickens that we did, we ended up with about 160 or 70 pounds of chicken. So pretty happy with that. So this year we had a lot of success with um, our layer chicks, we're getting plenty of eggs from them. I think uh, uh, this hoop coop that we built, um, it's worked out amazing. I think going forward, um, Rebecca wants to use, uh, it's dropping eggs we're not supposed to. Um, Yeah, this is where we want to raise them uh, for sure during the summer. We're going to find out. Um, Rebecca wants to uh, take a shot at um, raising them out here. So we're going to, um, we'll enclose the rest of it. And the plastic, it'll help keep it a little warm in here. Um, we'll see how things go. Right, ladies? <laughs> yeah, we got some egg breakers. You an egg breaker? I hope not. This um, fake grass. Yeah. This fake grass that we put in here. That has worked out nicely. Um, we just take it, shake it out, rinse it off. Yeah, so Rebecca, she has decided that she's going to uh, want to keep the lane hens where they're at, keep the rooster and these two, the older hens, uh, up here in a smaller coop. So we'll have some work to do to get things cleaned up. You know, anytime you get a chicken coop, the one thing you're not lacking is a mess. You see, they're putting eggs where they're not supposed to either. We haven't cleaned this out since last fall. So, uh, we're gonna clean it out today. So like I said, today, we have a crappy job to do. It's always fun. We'll go through this once a year. We clean, uh, we clean out these uh, coops. I know it sounds pretty rough when you're talking about doing that, but the um, it helps build in heat when that stuff starts decomposing and keeps them uh, uh, warm during the winter months. Oh, and we got an exciting new product coming that we're going to install in the coop this year. Um, hopefully the chickens will love it. Um, 
my wife, Rebecca, she'll feel better about it. Uh, it's a surprise. We'll be installing it here. Hopefully within the next couple, two or three weeks. We'll explain more about it to you. I'm not sure what happened. The uh, camera shut off. Back on now. Test one, two. As I was saying, um, the chickens are by far the easiest and cheapest livestock to raise. Um, they're pretty easy. I mean, they're the easiest to take care of. You give them a little food and water, clean out their coop once a year, twice a year, and uh, it's all good. Chickens are happy. They're laying eggs. They're uh, providing meat. I don't know how many people out there really don't like chicken. Yeah, I'm sure there's people out there. Yes. Like I said, the only real work is right now. Cleaning out their cleaning out their coop. Thank God for the uh, opportunity to have this experience. Um, to raise our own food as we do. Um, I know that uh, I know that there's a lot of people out there that can't do that. Um, they live in a cul-de-sac. They got it. Um, um, HOAs that won't allow them to do this type of stuff, thank goodness, uh, we're not in that position. Um, I don't even know what to think. You know, the, with the prices in the grocery stores and how those prices continue to escalate, we're, uh, we're pretty blessed because who knows where the, that future is going to be a year from now, six months from now, three years from now. Can people really continue to afford to spend the money that they're spending uh, just on their everyday needs? I, I just, I'm not sure how you do that. I mean... We're fortunate we've got a skill set here and what we don't know we're going to learn. And I'm glad to have you here so you can learn with us uh, because knowledge is everything. To, to have the stuff to be able to do it is one thing, uh, but knowing how to do it's another. What would you do tomorrow if eggs went to suddenly went to ten dollars a carton, or uh, um, bread going for five or ten dollars a loaf, milk going for fifteen dollars a gallon? I mean, what are you gonna do? Can you afford that? Do you have the skill set? that will allow you to provide that stuff at little to no cost.
can you grow the fruits and vegetables? Can you make your own bread? Could you grow your own meat from your own meat source? You know, I know a couple people that have are storing a bunch of seeds, but they never grow anything, just in case. And I, I asked one guy, I says, so what are you going to do with them seeds if, um, if you've got to grow your own food? He said, we're just going to plant them. And if you don't know anything about your soil or how to irrigate it or um, how far apart to plant it or how deep to plant it, when to plant it. Does it need sunshine? A lot of sunshine, little sunshine. Uh, you know, um, I think you gain a lot of that from experience. Obviously, we're here to help you um, learn some of these skills along with us. Sure, it's a little work. But I think having the ability to do something like this in the event of some catastrophe, you know, you're out of power for, uh, what are you going to do if you're out of power for a week? You know? <laughs> Just seems it. We've added the uh, grass to the bottom of their laying boxes. Hopefully they're going to start using them. It's all cleaned out. There's nothing left in there. You gotta go get some wood shavings to put in their coop for the bedding. So I'm gonna do that now. And then when I get back, I'm gonna put their uh, wood chips in. And then a project that I was actually gonna do last fall, never got around to, is I'm gonna put some extra outlets in here on the one side to plug in for the bunny heaters for their uh, waters and what have you so we're gonna get that taken care of today all we're gonna do is run electricity from this outlet here across so we run it from there and we're gonna run it across to here and we're gonna have electricity on this wall too. And the reason being is we've been running, we ran an extension cord last year uh, from that wall over to here. And I really don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna just do it right, put some outlets in today. We'll get that taken care of as well. All right, the stuff that we use for our chickens are large wood shavings or um, um, it's a softwood pine wood shavings. We uh, put that in the bottom of the run. We picked this up from Family Farm and Home. Now I'm just going to put one bag in there for right now. Later on, we'll add more. spreading it around.
And then I'm thinking one should do it. You want to make sure it's good and broken up. You don't get any of the clumps together. That way it's all nice and fluffy. Now this will help keep the odor down. It'll collect any pee or anything like that from the uh, uh, from the chickens. Get the cans moved back in. These, each of these have their food. We have their food there. Um, this one has their chicken scratch. And this one here is the uh, rabbit food. Listen, I know it's not easy. I know there's a lot of people that are out there in apartments that, uh, or wherever you may be, you may be in a trailer park. We started out in a trailer park. Um, we've lived in apartments, so I understand that. You can get your, put your mind to it. You can make your dreams come true. Um, I, I just, uh, we're, Trying to show you a way of doing things. Uh, if you if you are fortunate enough, we've got almost three acres here, um, and we do don't live in a town. We live in a rural area, and we're trying to show you um, uh, an easy way to save yourself some money, save yourself some headaches, uh, provide yourself with uh, uh, food that is. I mean, it doesn't have any chemicals in it. It's not been treated with any poisons or anything like that. Uh, it's just good, healthy food. You know what's going into the chicken. You know what's going into your cows or goats or whatever else that you are raising on your farm. It is so important. And like I said, we don't know what will happen today or tomorrow or three years from now or five or ten years from now. Um, you know, uh, the financial markets, they may be fine. Uh, but what happens if they're not? Um, can you be prepared? You know, knowledge is everything. A lot of people would like to come into this lifestyle and aren't really sure how to get here. Um, save your money up, pay your bills on time, get your credit fixed. Um, we bought this house on a rural development loan. Um, so it's a federally backed uh, uh, um, uh, housing loan. Um, Stu. Do something for yourself. I mean, I know it's not easy to get here. It wasn't easy for us to get here. We're here to try to help you through that. Uh, we are going to do a video of someday on you know how we obtained our house and our property. Um, we really had some big hopes and dreams all our lives of, of getting here. Uh, and now that we're here, we're actually doing it. And I enjoy doing this. I enjoy um, coming out here and working on the chicken coop. I enjoy coming out here and feeding animals and, and helping Rebecca with the garden. Um, even though I might be a pain in the rear end sometimes to her, um, I really do enjoy doing this. So, um, 
And as far as the, uh, the stuff that we took out of here and I took to the, um, and I put in a compost pile, and what we're doing is we're composting that. And eventually that's going to turn into good, healthy soil that we'll take out to the garden area and that we'll use on the plants. And I just wanted to say thank you for visiting our channel. Um, we really appreciate you. If you can subscribe, like, and share these videos, that'd be awesome. I think you're all amazing people. Um, and I think if you put your mind to something, you can make it happen. God bless and have a great weekend.